Look at the bird on that. The, oh wow. That queen is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> they, right. they like they like bricks. <laughs> you heard that, it. That's a picture. Big like this. Yeah, that's my first year of beekeeping. Mm -hmm. Um things I wish someone told me mm -hmm. at that time was And I'm Nathaniel from Be Happy, and today we're going to be doing our pre-spring spring inspection. I was kind of tongue tied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, basically, it's just an inspection. So um, we follow up from our last inspection mm -hmm. to know or uh, to get an idea of how well the bees are progressing up until spring. And in spring, early spring, um, for that inspection, we will know whether or not whichever, which hive will produce honey mm. um, down the line. Yeah. yeah. So um, with beekeeping, like any other thing, you have to kind of look way ahead, mm. be able to tell what's coming now, so you can um, prepare the hive. Um, for like the flu maybe a month for two months down the line mm -hmm. but you need to start working now mm -hmm. yeah so um we'll be in the be natural garden showing you what we do on more of like a hobby side and eventually we'll go to my bee yard where we'll show you the preparations for more of a, like a larger scale mm -hmm. commercial type um mm -hmm. style yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um like everything else in beekeeping, it's all seasonal. Mm -hmm. um, now we're in the winter months, quote unquote, winter months. And um, the bees are now starting to get out of that um, slow moving mm -hmm. phase mm -hmm. and heading up for spring, which I can't wait to see. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to get here, spring? <laughs> it's yeah. coming. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're kind of waiting for spring. And with that, I think we had a question of um, why is honey seasonal? Well, yeah, people were asking, like, okay, why can't they buy a bottle of honey now? Because a lot of people ask me for honey. Yeah. And right, um, we have to kind turn of, them down yeah, a little bit, yeah, tell them yeah, wait. Yeah. And they are wondering why, why we just not go in the bees anytime we want and take honey. Yeah. That's not the way it's done, that, right? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. So, um, usually... They are free. <laughs> Usually, there are three um, flows in a year. Um, you have the spring flow, you have the summer flow, and you have the fall flow. Um, a lot of the times, the fall flow isn't much. Mm. The spring flow, if you prepare your bees well in time, you can get a very good crop. But my favorite is the summer flow, mm -hmm. where you get that beautiful savonet honey that we mm -hmm. all love, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so after you harvest the honey from the summer, that is the honey that usually takes you up until January, February. Mm. Because the um, honey that the bees make in, uh, um, in the fall, Oftentimes, you either leave it for them or it's not that huge of an right, amount right. to mm -hmm. keep the market up. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a few hundred hives, which is where I'm heading eventually. Yeah. So we can bridge <laughs> the gap. So, yeah. you know, but at the moment, no, um, I'm just about the hundred map. So it's still a bit challenging to supply steadily mm -hmm. throughout that time of year mm -hmm. so i hope that answers the question mm -hmm. and right, right. <laughs> for real so stop bugging the man for the honey it's no. coming <laughs> it's no, coming no no keep the request coming <laughs> all right keep the request coming just don't be disappointed when the answer yeah. is 
in a few months. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. That I hope that um, clears yeah. some information. Yeah, out. we yeah. cannot just go in the bees anytime. Yeah, it, it takes. It there is a process. Too. Right, right, and the same thing with beeswax. Yeah, it kind of yeah. has a season too, which is yeah. strange to think about. Yeah, that definitely. It, um, so we're it, getting it the same as the honey. Right. Um, because the wax that we use. And to sell for the balms and the um, deodorants and mm -hmm. so on. That is the wax that comes from the capping. That's the cleanest. That's the nicest, the neatest wax you get mm -hmm. from the hive. So that's what we often sell to be natural. So she can um, use in her products. Mm -hmm. Now with that, um, like what was the percentage I calculated? 12.5. 12, 12, 12. 12. Yes. So 12.5% of your honey heal is what you get in wax yeah so, so it's a very small very amount small. of wax for honey and if you think the honey is not enough <laughs> the beeswax is, <laughs> is even yeah. a rarer commodity yeah and yeah. it actually the beeswax actually used to be more expensive than honey back in yeah, the day yeah, like in, in the ancient the, times the time of the roman catholic right when, they yeah, rely on the beeswax candles for the um lighting of the church yes. and the streets in england mm -hmm. and so on even in Egyptian time, mm -hmm. I think like um, per pound, mm -hmm. it is said that the wax was more valuable yeah. than the one. Mm -hmm. Even now, you can kind of see it yes, to a yes, certain extent. Yes. It's very yeah. precious. <laughs> and Egyptians used to use it for embalming and sealing tombs and yeah. all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's an ancient um, product <laughs> from yeah. the hive, well used, and we're happy to have it in be natural products. Yeah, definitely. Sure. definitely. <laughs> All right, so on to our inspection. We're going to first start with my one hive that we just moved a few weeks ago. Yeah, into um, we uh, moved from a nook to a ten a frame. Box, yeah. Right, and then after that, we will go and inspect the three hives that we saw last time, mm -hmm. January what twelfth, yeah, right, yeah. and see how they're doing because we you know we fed them last time and yeah. then the flow came the flow. and so we're really excited yeah, to see yeah. what's been going definitely, on <laughs> definitely. yeah hopefully they look a lot better but um i've been there and just from the traffic from mm -hmm. the entrance they look a lot better right. um it looks like things are really picking up and you can smell the spring you, know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can really smell spring yeah, across the yeah. corner you know yeah. Like even if like it's been raining for a few days, mm. the sun comes up and you can tell that is like a in Dominica we call it a cowem. Mm -hmm. You can tell that's a cowem sun that yeah. really starting to come yeah. on. Things dry up and it's not as humid as mm. um, you know um, later down in the year. Or mm. in, the breeze is getting warmer even. Too, yeah, so. yeah. So that's my time of the year. That's a bee's time of the year. That's mm. a beekeeper's time of the year. Mm -hmm. And you know, we just cannot wait for that beginning of the season, yes. the spring. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. let's go and check out the hives. <laughs> Going in the Be Natural branded hive here. We got our sticker from Print City. Seeing how well it holds up. It's doing very well in rain and sun so far, as they promised. So we're very happy with it. And the entrance. And see the bees coming and going. And see that nice clean entrance. And you said Nathaniel is from washboarding. Yeah. They kind of Partly because of traffic and partly because they intentionally clean that area. So you can see it's a different colour than the rest of the woods. So nice clean bees. Bees are very clean creatures. So they're keeping the bee natural hive very clean and tidy. So let's see what we get when we go inside. <laughs> okay so what um based on your last inspection mm -hmm. right um what are you hoping to see um during this one mummies <laughs> <Okay. laughs> well um, i mean we transferred was it four or five frames four frames four frames okay so we transferred four frames 
and they were looking quite healthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had started to build comb even on the edge of the nook. Mm -hmm. So it seemed they were building up their population and looking good. Mm -hmm. So if I can see they've expanded at least to the frame out from them and they looking... That's a nice expectation. Yeah. I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I would like to see mobbies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's get in there. Yep. Let's see. I can already see your wish wow. open and granted. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Okay, so we're going to just take out this frame. Mm -hmm. Start from the outer edge. See that frame was pushing at first. Oh, completely. Yeah, yeah, nice. Okay. I'm thinking. Oh wow! Look at that. Mm. Said, Would you look at that? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Nice. Yeah, yeah. Building up some honey reserves there, and yep. that beautiful wax. Yeah, definitely. That is a very nice. Sign. Yeah. So, um, based on so our purpose of the inspection today is really to see the progress. Now, if we were just um, like if that was like just a normal inspection, that would be it for the inspection, right? Mm. But we just want to go in a little further and see if our queen is doing okay. So, in with that said, Miss. Henry, do yes, you see? Yes, I look at the bird on that. The, oh wow. That queen is awesome. <laughs> nice. That queen is doing her work. Yeah, and you can see that um, she the... can tell that spring is coming. Yeah. So she started brooding up the and the, the cup honey already. Right. Let me do and in there is full of eggs and larvae. Yeah. So I think we can pretty much call that an inspection done. Oh, wow. Um, just leave them ab about their business yes. and let them keep progressing. Okay. Can I just look at one more? <laughs> uh, sure, it's up to you. Just, just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Loads of larvae there. Yep. Lots of honey. I'm mm -hmm. surprised to see how much capped honey there is. Yeah, um, remember that the flow, mm -hmm. and um, there's not really like a dense bee population around. Mm -hmm. So they got all their chance to kind of... Yes. So now that reserve that they have, they're going to use that now to build up um, for the spring. Oh, that's lovely to see. Mm -hmm. I'm a happy beekeeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funny how things change yeah, um, so quickly. Yes, and they've even you can see even this one they're yeah. starting to build on because these are our four yes. frames. Yeah. So they're even building on this one and the next one. So yeah, just I got what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and I can guarantee you guys this wasn't planned or we no. didn't look in there before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's nice to see. Very nice to see. Okay, minimal disturbance. Yep, yep. Uh -huh. is, well, well, is reading is good to go in a hive and just let them get accustomed to a little disturbance, but not too much disturbance, right? Agreed. Yeah. yeah. 
because really they just want to be left alone to do what they need to do. Yep. They're doing a great job at it, so yeah. why why disturb the progress? Yeah. And a, a huge part of beekeeping too is letting them just get on with the job. Mm -hmm. You um, give them what they need in times when they need it, mm -hmm. and other times you just let them be. With management and manipulation and all that, mm -hmm. <laughs> that I comes in it. Come out. Yeah, we'll just knock them off and put them. Yep, that's it. Okay. All right. The natural cover going back on. Lovely. Give thanks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, on to the next. All right. Wow, I can really smell those bakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so I I had some um cardboard. Uh, not cardboard, but um, paper bags, yeah. and some had some bakes in there and smoke bakes, man. They'll be alright, they like, they like bakes. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, that's, that's a big <laughs> That's not scientifically proven. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um this is the entrance activity on the three. This one was the one that was struggling a bit more. You can see it's kinda up on population. Um we have this one and this one yeah. okay yeah so i'm just going to do like a quick so Nathaniel, if you could only go into your hives as you have your nice suit on. <laughs> Where's the suit from again? Uh, well, so we got it from, it's a manly product, but we got it from Richard. Richard uh, in St. Lucia? Richard, yeah. Right. So I see you have your nice vented suits <laughs> and you have your smoker. Now, if you could only choose one to go in the hive with, what, which would you choose? I'll uh, definitely choose my smoker. Wow, yeah. okay. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, well, um why with the smoker you can prevent like uh you can prevent an attack from Good, the you know? start okay rather than having the bees all riled up and you know then you're uncomfortable but you want the suit so mm. if that makes any sense because i normally sometimes i do go in the smoke in the hives with just a smoker mm -hmm. But I don't go in the hives with just a veil. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. Makes sense. <laughs> but we just advise beekeepers, always, go with all your equipment. Yeah, always, <laughs> yeah, always use your gear. Yeah. Um, sometimes you, um, you might feel that there's no need to. Mm. We always advise. You could be just going by the entrance to clear it out. Mm. You can use the veil like what mm. Terry has. Mm. Um, she got it from Bloombox. Mm -hmm. Feel free, go there, get one. It's not that expensive, like yeah. 30, 40 like, yeah, forty something dollars. Yeah, forty something dollars, and it's easy to just easy put to on just and put off. On, you clean around your hands yeah. and then you're gone. Never go in with no veil. I've mm. done that already, and it didn't end well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stings on the eyes. Yeah, it's just eyes. not nice. Yeah, in, the, in your nose. Nose will bleed. I'm yeah. leaking. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, we're fully protected, and yeah. you know. Well, not fully, good. but no. you know. Yeah, enough. Um, given the time of day and the day that we chose to make the inspection as well, that's mm. a huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, you want to go in, in like a, a bright day um, when there's a lot of sunlight out, mm. um, which is why we've waited until now. Mm -hmm. well, one of the reasons why we waited until now to do our inspection. It um you can if you if you know what you're doing, you can be in there at any time. Mm -hmm. but it takes experience. 
don't just think that you know it all and you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, take your time, learn the bees. Mm -hmm. They will teach you how to treat them. Mm -hmm. Right. And right now, though, it's very hot sun, so you have to be either prepared for the hot. Like you're finding less bees in the hive at this time, so yeah. it's easier to manage. It is but you have to deal with the hot sun. Yeah. Whereas if you go in the morning or the evening time, you will feel cooler. But you've got more bees to deal with. Okay, so pros and cons. Master beekeeper. I've been learning from my IAC beekeeping course, you see. Thank you, Richard. Shout out. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Let's see what they are. And you're expecting to see more bees too? Yeah, I was expecting to see more bees. Um, let me just see if there are resources on the edge. Um, but basically that's it. Um, that inspection is nothing, is not a, like a major inspection. It's just to see the progress. Hmm, okay. So that that um, brain feeder was full last time. Yeah, we, we, we fed them we last fed time, them so that's empty now. Okay, so there is stores on the edge. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And, uh, that's a good sign. And they're clearing space for the queen to lay on mm -hmm. that frame. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, they have a lot of nectar, but they're absolutely clean and polished. Mm -hmm. Nothing in there yet, but um, from just being around bees and knowing, you know, how they work mm -hmm. for the past uh, couple, well, before I even say that, I can see one larvae in there already. Mm -hmm. So, I can tell it. that is an area where the queen is going to expand into and they're actually preparing it for mm -hmm. so nice. that's good stuff oh and look there yeah, yeah. it's already starting on that side yep nice such a pretty pattern yeah, yeah. so soon enough um when the spring hits we'll start counting our frames of brood mm -hmm. so we know which hives will be ready for oh wow which eyes will be ready for um, kennip, mm. the kennip flu. Oh nice, and we have a big kennip flu just across there, yeah. so yep. they'll be very happy. Oh, so you see all that is eggs, larvae. Mm. Mm. And you can see the difference there between what is capped brood, which is there, mm -hmm. and the capped honey. Yep. Very distinct different things are there. Yes. They're both cat and bees work, right? Yes. Right, so they're both looking quite different. And look at that. Mm -hmm. Brood of all stages. Yeah. Wow, well, well done, Queen. Yeah. She's on her A game. Yep. Yeah. Lovely. The next one is the same, the next one. So that is like one. Let, let's not start counting yet. We'll do it with a little patience. A little patience. Okay, all yeah. right. Um, when the time comes, we will start um, counting our frames of brood. And okay. Now, we left it quite a while since we've inspected this one. You know, it's like, it's over a month. And um, so we've just kind of let them do their thing while the flow was on. And then we had a little rain and stuff. So when now is going to be our next proper inspection where we're going to start counting our friends abroad and estimating when we if we're going to get a honey yield from them i usually do that in march okay um close to um the first day of spring mm -hmm. or the equinox the, huh? the equinox yeah, like 20th 21st yeah. so a good thing to do is to have like a, a marker in the year, mm. a specific time that you do something mm -hmm. so that you always have a good reference mm -hmm. point. So my first major inspection 
is usually about that time, about the equinox. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's say last year, if my bees had five or six frames of brood and they made me a crop in April, mm. I know this year I'm aiming for the same number. Okay, great. Right? It's never always the same, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you have a, a good idea of what you're looking at and what yes. you want to accomplish. Nice. So, this one is done. Nice. Even better, but that was the best one to stores on there yeah uh, nectar stores on there so you know that's good and that's basically our inspection and they have wet nectar in there mm. so you see that stuff it almost li extra liquidy Mm. Yeah, that can so because um I can tell by that that there's still stuff coming in from the environment. Okay. Because they have that wet um nectar coming in, mm. which is a good sign. Right. No, okay. As your uh experienced beekeeper, that. Thanks for the compliment. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> the that kind of inspection there that you just did you can tell a lot i can see that you can tell a lot from what's going on yeah as a less experienced beekeeper what would you advise like would you advise to do more of a fuller inspection to really look at the frames or what are the key things that you are looking for so that you you know like you're causing minimal disturbance like you just did mm -hmm. but you actually know what you're doing yeah yeah well it all comes with time and experience. Mm -hmm. um, there was one time when I had to actually go through everything, mm -hmm. and you can, as as you as you build up in beekeeping, you you can tell what happens next, mm -hmm. okay. and you kind of prepare for what happens next. Right. So just by looking at a nest is one thing but it takes time mm -hmm. yeah okay. you, that's something that you really have to um build up with time and with confidence right right so, so a less experienced beekeeper might need to just go through do everything. a little more looking yeah write more stuff down yes i mean i know you still write a lot down yeah I but do. um <laughs> you know like make just keep good records of what's going on so yeah. they have a reference point right. so what you yeah. notice when in the year right so right. like for this one let's say i that's my first year of beekeeping mm -hmm. um things i wish someone told me mm -hmm. at that time was like no i looked at that hive mm -hmm. and like no i didn't need to go through all the frames but my first year i would go through all the frames mm -hmm. see how many frames of bees mm -hmm. i have in there so i'll check the frames of bees i'll record that check the frames of brood i'll record that yes date i'll put that down as well yeah now i'll look at the trees what i notice in bloom mm. and i'll also record that okay so next year you have a map so okay so so today we did this inspection mm -hmm. a month down the line some major flow happened mm -hmm. right and that honey that hive makes honey so now you know okay well a hive that had x amount of frames of brood mm -hmm. by x time yes made this amount okay this amount nice. of yeah 
so yeah. you're just building and yeah. you're, yeah. every year you're refining it right right so i i feel like from you know what you've told me about your journey and it really takes a good few seasons of beekeeping yeah. to yeah. even just get the basics <laughs> there, there, there are beekeepers that have been in it for over 20 years mm -hmm. and they still they they would they often say they still don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. that's kind of <laughs> frightening you know but that's the reality of beekeeping yeah you're always um, learning you're always learning yeah, and they do what they want mm -hmm. you cannot tie them in grass mm -hmm. or whatever they go and do their thing mm -hmm. they can be building up well and they swarm mm -hmm. you cannot prevent that yeah so they do what they want but the best you can do is just study nature yes study yes. them um, anytime that you are wrong you have nothing to do you just come and you look at the entrance see mm. what they're bringing in right right um, yes just notice things yeah notice when the pattern changes mm -hmm. if they're constantly coming in and out or mm. if they're just hovering around the box or what does that mean so because eventually when you start getting a part of the picture today another part of the picture tomorrow mm -hmm. a third part on a third year mm -hmm. then you can bring all that information together yes yeah. and with that you get a, a, like a better idea right, of right. what the bees do when they do it so yeah. you can predict mm -hmm. down the line because uh -huh. anytime you in beekeeping and you're reactive you will not make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You have to be prepared for what's next. What's next. Right, right. So that's why, like, as, as you know, I am, have already built my boxes mm -hmm. to super um, my honey. Yes. You know, I have already prepared my frames, my mm -hmm. foundation. Those are all already taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, my, well, we'll go to my bee yard and I'll show you the rest. I'm mm. going to give away to <laughs> <laughs> All right, in, in cool. Video, you know? so, All right, yeah. cool. So, um, it's always about just preparing yourself. Yeah. And yeah. observing. Yeah. But I think that's valuable information for us, especially for a beginner beekeeper. You know, you can feel maybe a bit lost or like, you you know, and that's normal. Definitely. Like, you know, you it just takes a while to build up that experience. Yep. It's, um, beekeeping is a thing of patience. Mm. Uh, you're not really in control. And that's the truth. Like life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So first observations here. First observation is they, um, they're looking like they're okay. They have enough stores I can see from the top. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't expanded um, that much um, because that was the wiki size we had. Okay. So they, they haven't done much expansion, um, but they are maintaining uh, a population and even slightly growing. So we have resources on one, two, three, four, five, I can see from the top. Mm. And um, that was uh, eight frame, but they were only like on three frames on the bottom there. Okay. Something so. So um, they look they look okay. Um, yeah, again, you have to expect the, you have to expect that for the time of year. Mm -hmm. um, we're still in winter. Mm -hmm. Put on, uh, not Dominica, we don't really um, consider like a winter and thing. But when you're in beekeeping, it matters. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so. well, I think some people have been saying uh, the weather it feels like winter. You know, yeah. <laughs> we're we're a little bit better on the coast, but I know yeah. people up in the hills have. Very much felt like it's winter, <laughs> Caribbean, Caribbean Canadian, version. Yes, okay, yes. sorry for all the <laughs> Canadians and <laughs> yeah. minus temperatures. We're not there. No, definitely don't envy that one. Uh, uh. Okay, so they're building stores. Um, they are, I can see wet nectar on mm -hmm. there. Um, yep. So yeah, um, they grow in. Uh, growing nicely. Um, they have a nice little um, brood cluster of brood on the other frame there. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, I cannot um, I cannot ask for more, really. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one looking nice. Yeah, I cannot ask for more, really. Nice cut and yeah. Brood. Alright, back, back from some technical difficulties. <laughs> yep. So, as a recap for inspection, um, the original bee 
natural hive. Mm -hmm. Looks to be expanding very well, good population. They are actually drawing home, which uh, we were happy with. Uh, now the additional the natural hive, um, this, um, basically um, they are good. Mm -hmm. Um, we're very happy with the progress that they have made, especially at that time of year. Mm -hmm. um, they, it looks like they really capitalized on the capesh and the glory cedar mm -hmm. that has flowered so far. So um, they're well on the way. Hopefully by, um, like you were saying, in March, we'll mm -hmm. know whether or not they will be sizable enough to make us a spring crop. Or if we are just going to split them out mm. and continue that way. So we have one or two options allow them to make a crop and then split them or split them during the flow give them a best chance best head start for for the summer yeah for the summer yeah. okay so um so yeah so for that um should conclude our inspection and also um i just want to let people know that um because we're doing it one way it doesn't necessarily mean that's the only way to do it definitely <laughs> keeping it something that you learn and feel for yourself as well so all the information that we are giving and we say, oh, well, that's what you do. Technically, we don't really mean that's what you do. It means that's what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, you get a feel for it. Um, just use whatever you get from different beekeepers that you like, mm -hmm. and you customize it and make it your own. Right, right. And yeah. there's so many variables yeah. that you have to take into consideration. Your your bees, your environment, your expertise, your season, exactly. everything. You will hear beekeepers talking about screen bottom boards yeah. and queen excluders and this and that. It all depends on your environment and what you offer about. Mm -hmm. um, you can, if you want to try screen bottom boards, you put screen bottom boards on two, you leave two without. You see which one works best for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You want to use queen excluders in your hive management, you do it on two, you, mm -hmm. leave, you know, and so on. You mm -hmm. just get a feel for yourself yes and you grow it into you grow your personality and your beekeeping together nice um that's the art part of it <laughs> yep lovely so, all right cool thank you so much thanks for coming along yes for the journey. yeah <laughs> <laughs> see you again for the next inspection in a few weeks good yeah um so now we are at my yard in Monva, kind of windy so apologies mm -hmm. if you know you get the wind in the audio um but um so basically left unchecked um we get a lot of lemongrass here which is very flammable um during the dry season uh, actually that's a place where we have a lot of bushfires every year we're mm -hmm. fighting bushfires mm -hmm. so uh, it's the fact that I have my apiary in that area, I undertook a, a replanting project, a planting project. And um, not just me, but uh, a lot of people contributed to it. And part of the pre spring management is also to clean up the trees that I planted and take the lemongrass out away from them so that. When the fire comes, usually um, you want to say, from what I know, every year I've been fighting fires. So uh, when it comes, it, um, it doesn't burn or destroy everything that I've done, and it doesn't get to my bee boxes. So I'll just take you to the other side of the road mm -hmm. where I undertook the project, and I'm undertaking the project of um, getting back our land of the lemongrass mm -hmm. that has taken over. Okay. Uh, hopefully we can end up doing that for the entire mountain site. Yes. <laughs> a huge, huge ambition, but <laughs> yeah. we have to start somewhere. For sure. Yeah. Anyone that wants to join in the project, <laughs> contact me <B> Abby. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're now on to the other side. Ooh. And there's a difference. Ooh, there's a lot of wind. <laughs> yeah. So these are the trees that we planted about three years ago, mm. two and a half to three years ago. Um, I selected the glory cedar because I noticed that in the dry season they were not getting dry and um, flowered. They keep the moisture all through the dry season. So I 
planted them and so far it works out well. Um, after we caught there, like my crew, um, thanks to the NEP program, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I have a crew um, that I was able to clean the entire, take off all the lemongrass of the um, trees. And as soon as I clear it off, I put in um, pigeon pea seeds. Okay. Yeah, so the plan or the, the idea is pigeon peas is another plant I noticed that grows well in um, areas where it doesn't have a lot of water. Mm -hmm. They do well there. Uh, I started it last year, but now I'm doing it on a bigger scale. So the seeds are there. As soon as they get some water, they will start growing and they will keep growing throughout the year. When the wet season comes, it will, should have enough pigeon peas to keep the lemon grass down in that area. Mm, nice. That is the idea again. Hope yes. it works. So, so yeah. So um, the, also the, and another reason I chose the the glory cedar is because it's also a good nectar source. So as you can see on there, um, there are flowers in bloom, and it. We, I didn't have to wait like five or six years. Mm. After the first year, I was already getting flowers because I used to mm -hmm. Okay. Right? So that was one of the reasons for the glory cedar and, and the, the pea. Now, if you take a walk with me, into the vineyard. see like there's still a lot of work to be done mm. um, but that I am kind of okay with it because we um, we cleared all around the boxes mm. so when the fire comes if it gets to that side then it doesn't damage my boxes or it doesn't damage the tree because we isolated it um, on the inside mm -hmm. so that we take taken care of and we hopefully have taken care of that trees and fruit trees that we planted, we just mm. clear them out. Um, also, on top of the spring maintenance, as you can see, like the mm -hmm. yeah. So, part of my spring maintenance, also, my pre-spring maintenance or pre-spring work is to also change out old equipment. Mm -hmm. So, that box Damage. Okay. So that is a box that has to go out. Mm -hmm. So during the week, um, I'll come over, take out that box, mm -hmm. and let it look no. as fresh and clean as those. Nice. That box, either I will see what I can salvage from it as parts, mm -hmm. or throw it away if it uh, is absolutely damaged. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, that's part of what is the work involved in like being on a bigger scale where you have hives more or less like in isolated areas mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of cleaning up and preparation um, where um, when the season comes in you're not worrying or fighting mm -hmm. other things you're mm -hmm. just focusing on beekeeping mm -hmm. so I do the best I can to give the bees a good flight path because um, obstruction can kind of prevent them from bringing it in mm -hmm. bringing in the nectar as the most efficient as they can so now that they have an open entrance and clear from bush fires i think we're ready for spring nice yeah well and i just noticed something over there i want you to explain mm. the hive there has two entrances yeah so usually i run my hives with one entrance, a single entrance during the winter months, mm -hmm. and I run it with two entrances when I'm harvesting honey or in the um, spring summer months. Mm. Because the bigger the hive gets, you want to let them feel as less congested as possible. Mm. Um, you big or else you're going to get swarming. This hive is still has still has an open top. Mm. 
um, simply because it's a big and strong hive. Mm. So um, I know it has a huge population. They can manage mm. any other hive, as you can see from this one. Oh, yeah. I either close it up with a piece of wooden thing on the entrance yeah. or I put a wire mesh to prevent other bees from rubbing them off. Mm. So they are really looking good for now. It's just a matter of they building up that population and come the right time, I can look at them and estimate where they are and if they will make me a good spring crop. If not, I will use them to make my splits for persons who want to do beekeeping in the year or for basically operation. Mm -hmm. everybody who supported me along the way um, those who helped me build boxes donated boxes um, keep me grounded lessons learned mm -hmm. um, so in the upcoming season we really hope to um, at least improve on our product one of those being possibly the getting the honey to um, a phase where it is more like a lot of people wanted a thicker summer honey mm -hmm. the spring honey is usually thick but people like a thicker um, summer honey it lasts longer and it has more character that is something that I am currently working on. It's just um, that in order to get that done, I need to work on a better extracting facility. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of little things that you need to have and need to go right for you to um, do that part. So that's what I'm working on this year. Mm -hmm. And also to make a bigger one from the next one. So far, you know about it. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yes, it's going to be a nice year of documenting our beekeeping. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, thanks for watching. Until next time.